Hey guys, I'm Sebastian, host of Ninth Island Connection, your weekly lifestyle resource for all things Vegas. Check out the description below so that you can see how you can watch our television show wherever you are. That's right, we have a television show that you can watch every single week on television in your house. So check out the description below so that you can see how you can do that. We also go live every single Wednesday where we bring you an update of what's going on in Vegas. We give you a heads up on what to expect if you're going to be in town Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday if it's a long weekend. And we're talking concerts, traffic, what's open, what's closed, everything going on on that weekend. So check us out every single Wednesday between the hours of noon and 1 p.m. Vegas time. If you've ever been to Vegas, you know that it can be expensive. If you've never been to Vegas and thinking about coming here, it can be very expensive. So that's why in this video, we're gonna share five easy ways that you can start saving money from the moment that plane hits the tarmac. You can use that extra money to buy gifts, to gamble, to do something that maybe you didn't budget for. So this is a definitely a useful video that I think will benefit everyone. We're gonna start with the most obvious and that's gonna be beverages. We all know a lot of people, majority of people actually come to Vegas and they wanna drink. They start the first thing in the morning until they can't remember anymore when they started. So here are some tips to help you save money on alcohol, water, Gatorade, whatever you're trying to buy. Use ABC stores. There are Walgreens and CVS pharmacies up and down the strip you just have to look out for them they are outside and around the casinos or if you have a rental car hit up a grocery store off the strip don't have any shame walking through the lobby to registration with a case of soda a case of beer and a big case of water before you go check in you're going to see plenty of other people doing the same thing just be smart about it use the shops in the casinos versus the bars so you can go to one of the shops and get a beer for say i don't know five dollars you order that same beer at the bar in the casino it's going to cost you ten dollars or more so just be aware any of those drinks that you have up in your room you can take them with you you can do it wherever you want carry a six pack with you in your hand while you're sitting at a slot machine totally up to you or walking down the sidewalk with a 12 pack in your hand totally up to you you do not have to go to the shopettes take advantage of the beer or alcohol that you already have in your room and just take it with you we all know that you don't come to vegas and just sit in your room drink those beers that you bought at walgreens while the time passes by you're going to want to go out hit up happy hours a lot of people do not know that there are so many happy hours in vegas all you have to do is ask. Walk by somewhere and say, hey, do you guys have a happy hour? When is it? They'll be more than happy to let you know because they want to get you in the door. Most happy hours are going to be around the 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. or 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. time frame. So be aware of that. They're also going to have late night happy hours at different places. Not everybody has them, but they do exist. If you have an eye on a spot, just give them a call or walk over there and say, hey, do you have happy hour? When is it? What does it consist of? They're more than happy to share that information with you. If you're a coffee drinker, it's going to cost you. You're going to stand in line. You're going to pay seven to twelve dollars, depending on what you're drinking, basic coffee or lattes and all that stuff. It's going to cost you and you're going to stand in line. So be prepared or you can bring your own coffee pot. We travel to Vegas with our single serve Keurig Mini. We buy it, we bring our own pods with us and save so much time, so much money. And you could just chill in the room, roll out of bed, have a cup of coffee, and you don't have to deal with that mess downstairs. The reason I mention this is because most Vegas rooms do not have coffee in the room. And 99% of them do not have free coffee if you do have a coffee pot in there like Caesars Palace, for example. It's gonna cost you, so you might as well just bring your own if you can. Get those drinks while you're gambling. So a lot of people don't know that you can get more than one drink while you're gambling. Not for yourself, because you can't stack drinks on a slot machine or at a table. They won't let you do that. But like my wife and I, if I'm sitting at a slot machine gambling, she's standing there next to me, the drink person comes around, I order two drinks, one for her, one for me, never have a problem with that. 
So take advantage of it and you can get whatever. You can get well drinks, you can get Jack and Coke, vodka tonic, beer, seltzers, whatever you want. You can even get a cup of wine if you want it. Whatever you want, take advantage of it. If you're about to wrap up on a slot machine and head to another casino, sit there and wait while you've got money in the machine. Wait, get that last drink and take that roadie with you to the next spot. At some point during your trip, you're gonna get hungry. You're gonna be like, when is the last time I ate? I'm starving. You can save money on food everywhere in Vegas. There are so many specials. For example, there's a place called Blondie's inside the Miracle Mile shops. You can get breakfast before 11 a.m. for $5.99. You're gonna get two eggs, some breakfast potatoes, and a meat. That's all that you really need. And for under six bucks, you cannot beat that. There's also Oceans, also in the Miracle Mile shops, where they have every item on their menu for lunch that's only gonna be $5.99. You can get grilled salmon filet, you can get a burger, you can get tuna tartare, all, and so much more. They have a massive menu. Every item is $5.99. And they've got three drinks for $12. That's another one where it doesn't matter what the drink is, well drinks, draft, bottles, whatever you're drinking, you can do three for $12, but you cannot share. So you can't show up with three people, do the three for 12 and give one to each person. It's a per person and they're very strict on it. That's just a couple of examples because we've been to those so many times, but they have these deals all up and down the strip. You've just got to look for them, spend a little time, do a little research, check out social media and you will find them. And another great thing, and I always recommend this, is jump in a lift and get off strip. Go to Chinatown if you're looking for all you can eat sushi. Head down to the Arts District if you're looking for delicious wings and burgers that are gonna be less than half of what you're gonna spend on the strip. There's also East Fremont Street that has some great restaurants, great drinks, and it's gonna cost you, again, less than half at least of what you're gonna spend on the strip. If you're looking for something fast, you just wanna grab something and get going, don't wanna to have to get yourself ready, shower and all that stuff, you just wanna grab something and keep moving, there are some less expensive options that are right on the strip. For example, you've got In-N-Out Burger down the Link Promenade, you've got Stage Door that's right across from the Horseshoe, right around the corner from Flamingo and down the street from Cromwell. You're gonna get $2 hot dogs. You can get three hot dogs, three beers for under 20 bucks. And that's with tip included. Best deal in town. There's also several different pizza places that do serve pizza by the slice and they have them to go. Like Pizza Cake over there at Harrah's, you've got Secret Pizza over at Cosmopolitan, and this is just grab and go. Do they have a couple of seats and a little counter space? Absolutely, but you can just grab it and just keep on going wherever you're headed. The reason I mentioned these places specifically, there are more than just these, those are just some examples. But when you get yourself into these food halls, they've transitioned from food court to food hall. What does food hall mean? You're gonna pay more for the same food. One thing that's going to surprise you is the tip culture here in Vegas. You're going to tip everywhere. I went to Cosmopolitan, went to their little essential store, grabbed my own drink out of the refrigerator, put it on the counter, the cash register, hit it with the little scanner, beep beep, so it told me how much it was, turned the little thing around, and there was a tip option. Absolutely not. I will never tip in that scenario because that person did nothing but their job as a cashier and ring me up but expect it. It's everywhere. And it's not their fault. I'm sure that cashier did not go to work and say, I'm going to ask everyone for a tip. It's just how they're set up. I don't take it out on the cashier because I know it's not their fault. They're just doing their job, but expect it. Another thing that may surprise you is that there's going to be an automatic tip set up at certain places. For example, you may find yourself going and getting a slice of pizza somewhere. I'm not going to say where. They're going to flip that little screen around and it's going to be set on 25, 30 or 35 percent option. Now, you do have an option to just do other and do 20 percent or a specific dollar amount. So don't be compelled to over tip for service that you did not receive. You're also going to want to think about bringing your own snacks. Now, this is going to be like pistachios, sunflower seeds, whatever, because it's going to be so much more expensive inside of the casino if you forget 
hit up Walgreens, CVS, ABC store, anything outside of the casino is going to be much less expensive. Let's talk about fees at restaurants. You're going to find some places, not everywhere, you're going to look at your receipt and you're going to see a um, health care fee. You're going to see a uh, convenience surcharge. Um, there was one even, and I'm not going to call them out, where I asked about this additional service fee and they told me that's because the rent was increased at their location. So they decided to add an extra percentage fee on the tab so that the patrons are paying for the increase in rent. And that is a 100% true story, not lying. So just expect it. Again, it's not everywhere, but they do have the ability at the individual establishments to charge whatever fees they want. Pay attention to it and don't be afraid to ask. Chances are you're probably gonna wanna explore somewhere outside of the property that you're staying in. So let's talk about how to get around. And there's some great ways that you can save some money. Number one, this may be controversial. This is 100% based on our experience and we stay on the strip a lot. 100% recommend using rideshare instead of taxi. You're always gonna save money on rideshare. When it comes to Lyft and Uber, look at both apps you're definitely going to have times where one will be less expensive than the other for the same trip it's pretty much the same car most of the time they'll have both lyft and uber in the window so compare between the two apps and just pick the less expensive option if you've never used rideshare or if you have somebody in your party that hasn't used Rideshare, you're gonna get a discount either way. So if you haven't used Rideshare, you're gonna get a discount. If you have someone in your party, tell them to download the app. They're gonna get a discount for your entire ride. You guys can just figure out the finances later. You can also invite somebody to download the app and they're gonna get a discount. So either way, you guys are going to just be up and you're going to save money. Use the free trams. There's a tram that goes from Bellagio all the way over to Park MGM. You can get off at the shops at Crystals, Aria, wherever you want. It doesn't cost anything at all. And you can ride it all day long. There's also trams that will help you get from Excalibur to Mandalay Bay. This is free as well. This is really important, especially in the summer months. You don't want to be spending all day walking up and down those sidewalks and those crazy crosswalks and bridges all over the strip. The bus and the monorail are also options and you can buy passes for the duration of your stay or you can just go single. These are not going to be the fastest though. The monorail is all the way at the back of the properties and you don't have the best view. The bus, you're gonna be subject to whatever road traffic is taking place at that time because the bus cannot move any faster than the cars around it. And then there's always good old fashioned walking. Make sure you have comfortable shoes, men and women. I've seen men hobbling down the sidewalks. I've seen women carrying their heels or their cute little slippers down the sidewalk. The bottom of your feet are also gonna get sweaty. So if you're wearing rubber slippers, you're gonna be slipping and sliding in those things and you could fall down. So just be careful and take precaution. Another very simple way to save money is to just do your research and use discount sites like Groupon. They still exist. Travel Zoo, My Vegas. My Vegas is actually an app that you could download. You play slot machines, you play blackjack, different games, you earn coins that you can redeem for free stuff at MGM properties. You can also check out Vegas.com. There are so many Vegas websites. You're going to find deals on food, entertainment, salon, spa services, really anything that you're looking to do in Vegas, you can find discounts before you even get here, even tickets for shows. So check them out. You're thinking about booking your next Vegas vacation and you want to do it on a budget. Here are some tips that are going to help you save money on your Vegas trip. Avoid the busy times. Weekends are always busier. Thursday through Monday are always going to be your busiest time for people just being here. Now, you can save money if you book Sunday through Wednesday. Majority people that come in Thursday are probably going to be leaving 
Saturday or Sunday. You can book super cheap rooms Sunday through Wednesday. I would avoid holidays, any like long weekends, Memorial Day, July 4th. You get the idea. Any of those are always going to cost more because people are here for a longer period of time because they got an extra day off from work. The same goes for any big event. I'm talking about rodeo days. There is rodeo here in Vegas. This is cowboy country, Super Bowl, Formula One, really any big event that's coming to town. So avoid those times. Unless you're coming during those times, just expect to pay more. And look at budget friendly properties. The lower rate is also gonna equal a lower resort fee at the budget friendly properties. Now, Caesars, the resort fee, the incidental fee is always going to be the same regardless of the room rate. If you book something like Flamingo, you're automatically going to have a lower resort fee and a lower incidental per night that you're going to have to pay up front. And you do have to pay it all in advance. So be prepared for the incidental fee as well. That means, for example, if you stay at Caesars Palace, their incidental fee is $100 per night. So if you're coming in for five nights, you better be prepared to have a credit card with $500 free on it because they're going to charge that up front. Now, they don't charge the card, but they do put it on hold. You cannot spend those dollars. They are on hold on your credit card. They do not take cash and you cannot write them a personal check. I've seen many times on websites for like Caesars Entertainment, which they have several properties, MGM Rewards or Resorts, they have many different properties that it's less expensive when you book direct through their site. That is simply not true. The reason they're telling you that is because they don't want to share revenue with third party booking agencies. So Travel Zoo, Groupon, they're always going to have deals on there that are going to be better than if you book direct. However, regardless of the deal that you do on Groupon or Travel Zoo, the incidental and resort fee, you're still going to have to pay that at the resort. So that's going to be an additional charge to whatever you pay Travel Zoo and Groupon. So if you book three nights at Flamingo through Travel Zoo and it's $100 and you're like, yep, I'm all booked. I pay Travel Zoo. When you get to the resort, you're going to have to pay resort fee for three nights and you're going to have to pay incidental for three nights as well. So you're going to have to pay additional just expect it. Also, check out My Vegas. This is a free app that's linked to MGM properties. You play these little games on there, slot machines, blackjack, different things, and you earn coins. Those coins can be converted to dollars, not that you can cash out, but that you can spend on booking rooms for free. Again, even though it's free and it's a reward through My Vegas, when you get to the resort, you still have to pay resort fee, taxes on the resort fee, and you still have to give them a deposit for the incidentals. That's all additional. Comps are free rooms. Now, the free room doesn't mean that you don't pay resort fee, taxes on the resort fees, and incidentals. If you are a certain level with a player's card, you can have resort fees waived at that point, but you will never get out of paying incidentals, ever. They're gonna get it from you. Now, when you get to the property, sign up for the rewards program. The great thing is, is that majority of properties on the strip is gonna be Caesars Entertainment and MGM. So really those two cards, you'll do just fine up and down the strip. Use that card every time you spend money at that property. Whether you're getting a cup of coffee, you're at the shop at buying a beer, you're gambling, whatever you're spending money on, give them that card and ask them if they can add points. You want that because the property is gonna see that you're spending money you don't have to spend money on just gambling to get free stuff from the hotels. You're spending money there. You are valuable to them. You're not going to see comps right away on that first trip unless you win massively or spend a ton of money. They might say, we're very impressed with your play, just like they do in the movies, right? We want to give you a free room, stay a little bit longer, or we want to give you some free dining options. Highly likely that's not going to happen on your first trip, but you will see those offers come in after you get back home. Give it about 30 to 60 days. You'll see some emails coming through with different offers, discounted rates, um, comps for food or dining credits, those sorts of things. 
in general, it's gonna be less expensive to stay downtown. Your resort fees, if they exist, are gonna be less expensive. Incidentals are gonna be less expensive. However, it will cost more when they do have special events. So keep that in mind. That's a wrap on this one, guys. As always, we wanna hear from you. Comment below what are some tips and tricks that others can use to save money. Something that you've done in the past that you want to recommend to other folks to save money on their trip to Vegas. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for watching this video. Go ahead and subscribe. All we do is bring you Vegas. Take a look around. You're going to love the content on our channel. We appreciate all of you guys, your support on our channel and our social media. If you've got further questions, hit me up on Instagram. Send me a DM, Ninth Island Connection on Instagram. TikTok, Facebook, we're everywhere. Ninth Island Connection highlights Las Vegas businesses, entertainment, events, and activities on and off the strip, keeping our viewers connected with the Ninth Island of Las Vegas. From local mom and pop restaurants to those owned and operated by top chefs, from kitchen action to the inspiration behind the dishes, we deliver the culinary creations of Vegas. From Las Vegas entertainers and athletes to all of the exciting activities and experiences around the Vegas Valley, we keep our viewers connected with all of the excitement that the entertainment capital of the world has to offer. Of course, we can't forget about the casinos that make Vegas, Vegas with exclusive tours of the incredible amenities and beautiful accommodations, getting right in the heart of the casino floor action and entertainment, as well as interviews with casino owners, CEOs, GMs, and executive chefs, we bring the Las Vegas Casino into our viewers' homes. highlighting lesser known areas like the Fremont East District, the Arts District, and Brewery Road, we bring attention to these small businesses that have become fast favorites in the local community. We bring our viewers a complete Vegas experience. We also invite our viewers along as we venture into the great outdoors of the Las Vegas Valley, sharing short road trips, hikes, and the unique sights found in the Mojave Desert. Great people, great stories, great connections, only on Ninth Island Connection.